Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to get started. Um, before we get too far into this, I just want to teach you some basics um, that I think are very important. Uh, everybody should definitely be uh, considering this when they're writing code. And that's this top section here. Um, to do a comment in Python, you would start out with this hashtag. Then that makes your font a little bit different to denote that it's actually a comment. So uh, Python will actually ignore it, but it gives information to whoever's looking at your code. And it could even be you. Ten years from now, you may forget why you did this, what your code was supposed to be doing. And this is your way of conveying that back to you so you quickly know what's going on. So I usually start out by putting the Python version. This is the version I was developing in. This is the version I know that my code works with. Um, then, of course, you put down your author. If you're working with a team of authors, it's good to put everybody down, maybe even your email addresses so you guys can get in touch with each other or someone can get in touch with you and ask some important questions about your code. And then, of course, put down your purpose. What was the whole intention of this software? What were we supposed to get from it? What's it supposed to do for us? That's, uh, that's pretty important. And then, of course, comment your code, you know, where it actually fits in and where it's important, where you think you actually need to really explain what your code's doing. And remember, think about the 10-year factor. 10 years from now, when you've actually done forgotten this software, you want this to quickly tell you exactly what it was you were doing. So just remember that concept. Down at the very bottom here, this code right here, this if underscore pipe um, name if you if you go down here if we run this script Python looks at that line and says okay you're running this as a script so I need to run the next function you have underneath this and then it will go down to each function in order so that's uh, important if you have this in here you know that this start function which I put underneath here is going to be the first function to actually fire off um, to fire off, uh, to test out your, your code, you want to go up and choose file, save it, then go to run, and run module. And yeah, you can use the hotkeys. I tend to do that a lot. But you can run the module. You'll see the results in this screen. You can actually set up your screen the way you want. This is just how I like to do it, and I think it's the, probably the best format for the video. So I'm going to go ahead, again, cut and paste some code in here to speed the process up. Feel free to pause it and uh, type it all out and get caught up to see what we're doing but this way i can go ahead and explain my code without making you wait for me to do all the typing so right now we're going to start off by passing a variable to the start function so this function we'll be calling this function because again down at the bottom we are calling start and in our start function we are using a python built-in method called print and print coincidentally has this function name that I put in here called get number. So get number is this function right here, which I am actually taking an integer, number 12. I'm putting that integer, saving it into this placeholder, this variable. This variable is, is just called number. So 12 is going into number, and then we're returning number to whatever function had called get number, which coincidentally is start. So print. We're not printing get number, we're printing the results, what's being returned, which is number 12. So let's go ahead and see that in action. There you go. We've got number 12 over here. So that worked. We successfully passed a variable from one function to another function. So let's go ahead. Let's um, With this basis, this background, let's go ahead and do something a little more advanced and uh, see that in action. So what, this is another way of, uh, again, doing the same kind of principle. We're going to be passing a variable from one function to another function. But in this case, we're going to use name. And for name, we're going to get the user's name, which we don't know in advance. So we can't just automatically store that in name. We're going to have to use this function here called this, this uh, raw input. With raw input, we're going to actually inquire from the user for feedback to save their answer into the name and then pass that off um, when you're dealing with python 2 it uses the raw input as a built-in method if you were doing this in uh, python 3 when you do this in python 3 you would actually be uh, you would actually just use input so input is it's it kind of condensed it down to just being input whereas python 2 
they're using raw input. So just understand that there are subtle differences between the two versions. If something isn't behaving the way you thought it should, do some research. That's that's going to be the uh, the golden rule here is research, research, research. In fact, you'll never be done researching and programming. You're going to always run into things that aren't working right or behaving right or uh, some uh, some concepts that are a little more advanced, and you're going to want to know more. So definitely be willing to do a lot of research. All right, so let's let's see this in action. We're going to go ahead. We're going to get the, we're going to ask the user for their name. They're going to give it to us. It's going to store it into the name. Uh, uh, variable here then we're going to return that to start who's actually inquiring to print it so here we go what's your name daniel bam says daniel so that that's how that's done um we could actually do what's called uh formatting which is a way of using wild cards so i want to show you how that's done um we could go up here where we're doing the print put in two quotes we're going to put off the word format and then it's got its own function so we got to do an open and then we're going to do a closed like that okay see how it grayed out that's how you know that you opened it and successfully closed it because it's graying from the open to the closed tag all right so this keyword format means whatever variable that i put here and if I put the placeholder symbol in here, it's going to just substitute. So um, let's say hello. That squiggly line right here, this chevron going this way, this one going this way. In between that, is, or basically that's the wild card. So Python saying, okay, all right, when I see that, if you put a variable over here, I'm going to substitute it. We are going to get a variable. It's going to be the return of the name from the user. So let's go ahead and see this in action. All right, what's your name? I'm gonna put in Sarah. I'm gonna lie. All right, hello, Sarah. See, so it actually substituted right here, the word Sarah, because that's what was being returned. Pretty basic, but definitely essential to learn this. All right, let's do one more. This is gonna be a little more advanced, um, but again, important so in this one we are actually gonna have start be the one to actually contain our our variables with the uh, with the information so uh, F name is gonna have so that's gonna be first name um, I like to uh, use naming conventions for my variables to be something that's a little more obvious so I know what it is think if you're doing a larger project and you're working let's say 30 pages in you don't want to be trying to track what all your variables were standing for so it's good to kind of use that naming convention so f name first name is going to be sarah last name connor you got age 28 and then we threw in a gender female and then at that point we're going to call our get name function um of course name isn't really good we could say something more like uh maybe get info there we go let's change it up we're changing our code here let's put info there so now we're going to call this function get info it makes a little more sense so get info is going to require the first name the last name age and gender it requires these four variables if it doesn't have this it's going to give an error so we have to give it to it in order for this function to work because it's requiring it. So we are saying, all right, we're going to call you and we're going to give you this information because we just so happen to have all that information right here. Get function is going to take that, take those variables in, and we put in a bunch of wildcards. Wildcards work in order. So when Python sees this first one, it's going to fire off this first variable. It sees the second one, fires off the second variable. Third, likewise right so that's how that works you could put in starting with a zero index then the one then the two then the three it will still do this in order just like that over here so it doesn't really matter if you you know put the numbers in there um, but just so you're aware you can do that maybe it makes it easier for you um, later on so there you go let's go ahead and save this let's see, see this in action There you go. So my name is Sarah Connor. I'm a 28 year old female. Boom. There you go. It used all of our information just like we wanted it to do. So that is it in a nutshell.
and we're going to be using that concept as we go to do this particular uh, this particular game. So let's go ahead and start off with that. Um, again, I start with the start function, so I'll just get us back to that. In this start function, I'm going to actually do one extra thing, which will be nice to show you. I'm putting in nice as a variable. It requires mean as a variable, and it requires name as a variable. And if you notice, I have an equal sign and a value. This is default. So if um, this function start is not being provided nice, it's not being, being provided mean, it's not being provided name, it won't necessarily get upset and give us an error because I gave it default values to use in the event it doesn't it wasn't provided anything. If you do provide it something, then it will overwrite these defaults with whatever it is you give it. So to start off the game, we're normalizing ourselves. We're initializing. Nice is zero. Mean is zero. Name is empty. We don't know the person's name. They haven't gotten any actual score for the game yet. So we're starting out initialized. So directly below that, I'm going to go and say name. So in order to get this uh, name variable, we need to call the describe game function. And we're actually passing in the name variable. Right now, we have it. It's empty. But eventually, we're going to get the user's name, and that will be given back to us. So we'll have their name, and we can actually address them accordingly. Um, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to do the function for, uh, for doing the describe game. And in, when we go to describe the game, basically what we're going to be doing is describing to the user exactly what they can expect to play this game. So there we are. We've got describe game. These three quotes, these three quotes, what's in between it is going to be uh, commenting. You could do this up here with the uh, hashtag. That's generally when you want to comment one line. If you want to comment what they call block quote, that's a lot of lines all at once. That's how you would do it, is using these three. So, And it is a little bit different color. You can adjust that in Python. That's just the color coding I like to use. All right, so there you go. I gave a little description. Here's what the user, or here's where our logic, so what's going to happen. We're saying if, if our name isn't empty, then we have their name, and we can actually address them accordingly. That's why we have the wildcard here. If, and that's, again, we're using that wildcard format function with the name variable being substituted right there. Um, then at that point, uh, we're going to do a loop. And uh, we're going to give, to, to do this loop, we're going to say stop is equal to true. Then the next line is the while loop. And we're saying while stop. So basically, stop is true. So we're saying while true. We're going to continue to do this over and over and over again until we set it to false. At that point, it will stop doing its loop. I don't want to set it to false until the user has actually satisfied my question. If they haven't satisfied it, I'm going to continue to persistently ask this question. So we want to get their name. So once we have that, we're going to actually... When you're dealing with user input, it's a good idea to control it, to initialize it, to... Um, to actually normalize it into a format that you you can actually use. So I'm going to do a dot capitalize at the end of this. That's going to take whatever they give us and do a capitalization to it, making it a little more presentable for us to deal with it later. Um, then at that point, if uh, after we ask the question, if the reply isn't empty, we can go ahead and address them accordingly right here. And then we can go ahead again, set stop the false to stop the loop. Better ways to handle this, more advanced ways to handle um, user input and, and, and basically uh, verifying the information, the data that they gave you is correct. Like they didn't just give me a number 12 for their name. But uh, that's, that's beyond the scope of this particular tutorial. So that's that part. Let's go ahead and we're going to add in our next. So basically to figure out what it is we're going to do next is if you have a function that you called in here, that should probably be the next thing you write down so you can define that function. Um, in here, we don't. So after we do this, name comes back up here. So at the end here, we're returning the name that we just got from the user. Returned it back to here because we called and we said, we're going to give you a name. It's empty. Go ahead and do your stuff. Give us the name back. And we'll store it and use it. So now the next thing is the nice mean 
name. We're going to get all three of these variables all defined. We're going to call the nice mean function. And we're going to pass in what we know currently for nice, mean, and name. Currently, we know nice is 0, mean is 0, and we now, got, we now have the user's name. So we can, we can work with that. So let's go ahead. We'll do the nicer mean um, function here. Let's grab that code. All right. All right, so there's the nicer mean function. Again, we passed in our three variables. Now, nicer mean can have access to these variables and work with them. We're doing another loop. I'm going to hit um, set stop to true. So while true, we're going to do we're going to call show score. So that'll be another function we're going to have to lay out here in code so Python knows what is you know what show score function is supposed to do. Um, if uh, let's see, we're going to set this to pick, and um, that just kind of something I just chose again that's just a variable um, I'm trying to be intuitive this is what the user is picking because the next thing we're gonna do is ask them a question so we again do the raw input the question in here is a stranger approaches you for a conversation will you be nice or mean and then I put up here n or M so they can see that the type of data we want back is an as a n for nice M for mean and then I put a dot lower at the end, so if they do it as a capital or lowercase, we're still going to get lowercase, which, you know, at that point we can um, kind of expect the data and know how to work with it. The slash n here, forward slash n, that means to go down one line on, on the screen over here. So this way my, my text isn't kind of getting all clogged together. We're just going to give it a little space in between. So if whatever the user gives us, if they say no, then at that point we can go ahead and invoke this line of code. And then we can add our zero currently for nice. We can add one to it. Nice will be one now. We do it again, two, three, and we'll just keep adding it up. Once we um, add a score like this, we don't need to continue to ask this, this, this person this question. So we can set it to false. We don't need to loop through this again. So once they give us one or the two of the answers, we'll just set it to false. Then at that point, we have our information we needed, and we can uh, we can pass these three variables to score. And then scores function will do something for us as well. So we'll start off up here with the show score because that was the first function I called. And uh, let's do that. So show score is pretty simple. It's just going to show the score to the user, to the screen. Um, show score requires nice mean and name. Then we have the wild cards, and we're going to use that information to present to the to the um, user. The next part that we need to go ahead and do is this right here we call score, passing in nice, mean, and name. So we'll go ahead and do the score, get that down. All right, so there's the score. Again, it requires nice, mean, name. What we're going to do is we're going to check nice. We're going to check the value of nice. If it's greater than five, we call win. So we'll call a win function. So they'll win basically if they have more than five. And you can set it to whatever you want. It just kind of makes sense just to keep it kind of short. Um, mean, if that goes greater than five, they lose. And we call the lose function. And again, we pass in our variables accordingly. Um, if it's neither of those, if they so they didn't lose, they haven't won. The game's still afoot, so we're going to call the nice mean function all over again. That's, again, going back up here and uh, asking them again if they want to be nice or mean and then doing the adding of either nice or mean. So the next function that we called here was going to be um, the win. So let's go ahead and we'll get that down there. So we've got the win. That's coming up. Here we go. All right, so in win, right here, nice mean. We got our print function, we're substituting, we've got the variable, and then we're gonna call again function, passing over nice and mean. So you kind of see a basic theme here. We are passing variables amongst the functions. This is the best way to do it. You don't want to do uh, doing global variables where you define a variable at the very beginning of your code and then everything has access to it because you clutter up your namespace and um, it's really bad practice. 
the best way to do it is what we're doing right now which is to pass the variables from one function to another function and you have full control of what's happening with that variable um, the next function we call was lose right here passing in our variables so let's go ahead we'll get lose there we go pass in our variables it takes it it go ahead and puts it in place of its wild cards because of the format uh, method that we're using on it and again it calls again function so both of these are calling again function so that will be our next function to lay down there we go all right so in again we're, we're going to pass in our variables we can see we're going to be doing a loop um, again this is how I handle when I'm talking with with users so we've got to stop setting it to true so while true we're gonna give them a choice and that's gonna be a question we're gonna say do you want to play again so the opportunity to uh, to play this game all over again again data return is gonna be lowercase if their choice is yes we can stop asking we can call the reset function and pass in our variables. If the choice is no, we can go ahead and you know say, "Hey, see you later, alligator." Let them know that they we've acknowledged that they're they're wanting to. Uh, they've indicated they want to quit, and at that point, we can stop asking the question and we can run an exit method, which is again built in for uh, Python, and we'll exit our game. So um, if, if they didn't provide a yes or a no, they obviously didn't understand our question. So we have an else clause and we're going to print to them, you know, okay, well, Y means yes, N for no. This way, maybe they will better understand what it is we're looking for as a response. So um, the last piece of code here is we called reset right there. So let's go ahead. Let's make sure we have our reset function in here. So at the very beginning, if you look at this code, there's our reset function. If you look at this entire page, you think, wow, there's so much here. I don't know what it's doing. It's very confusing. But as you saw how I kind of went in order, one function is calling another function, calling another function, calling another function. After a while, you start to see how your program flow is working, what the logic's doing, and then it actually makes a lot more sense. And now this all seems like it's not enough code to finally pull off a game. So, all right, so let's let's look at this. Reset takes in nice, takes in mean, takes in the name. We're going to, so this is if they indicated they wanna play again. So if they wanna play again, it's the same player. So we're not going to go with their name and erase it we're gonna keep it so that way we don't have to ask them again but we are going to since they're playing the game all over again we're going to reset back to zero for nice and for mean so the score is gonna reset but we're not doing anything with name we're just gonna keep that so we can still continue to talk with them so the next function we call is start which again was our start function we started with this time Instead of name being empty, like we told it to do by default, we actually have a value now in here. So name, we've got their name, zero, zero. When we go to call the describe game, in the describe game function, again, down here, we said, or actually it was right here. In describe game, we said, hey, if, we, if it's not empty, we already know their name. We can just go ahead and deal with it right then instead of going through all this and asking them the question. So you see the logic and see how that works. Very key essential thing of passing variables from one function to another function. So that's this game in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and save this. And then we're gonna go ahead and run it. Now, don't be surprised if we get an error. That is the nature of programming. You, know, you, you No programmer is going to be able to fire off their code and expect it to work 100% of the time. There's always gonna be something to debug. We're human, we mistype. We put place, you know, characters out of place. Sometimes our logic gets a little fuzzy and we got to go back in and figure out what it was we were doing because the program's just going to do exactly faithfully what we told it to do. So we obviously have told it to do something wrong. So that's part of the fun of programming is going back and debugging your code. Um, again, this is my code that I've been working with. So I pretty much know that it's going to function, but hey, you know, there's always surprises. So, all right, so we just started it. Here it is. What's your name? I'll say Daniel. 
All right, so it's explaining, hey, welcome, Daniel. In this game, you'll be greeted by several different people. You can choose to be nice or mean. At the end of the game, your fate will be influenced from your actions. Then it says, Daniel, you currently have zero nice and zero mean points. So it's saying stranger approaches you. Do you want to be nice or mean? I'm going to say nice. I'm going to say nice for this. And it says, hey, a stranger approaches you. Do you want to be nice or mean? So it's asking me again. But it did right here say, Daniel, you currently have one nice, zero mean. So it is actually adding that up. So I'm going to be mean this time. So we should get, you know, a, a nice, one nice point, one mean point. Here we go. And yes, yeah, sure enough, we have one nice and one mean point. In fact, I could uh, enlarge this so you can see that happening. We don't need to look at our code right now. Um, do I want to be nice again? Well, what do you think? Should I win or lose? Let's let's go ahead. We'll try both functionalities just to make sure. So we're going to do nice. We have two nice, one mean, three nice, four nice, five nice. Remember what happens after five. I win. All right. Boom. All right. There you go. Nice job, Daniel. You win. Everyone loves you, and you now live in a palace. Do you want to play again? See, that was important. So it is going to our, do we want to play again? So I'm going to say yes. All right. Look at that. It reset. So, and now it kept my name. It said, hey, Daniel, you currently have zero nice, zero mean points. Do I want to be nice or mean? Let's be mean this time. All right. Three mean, four mean, five mean, and I lose. Too bad. Game over, Daniel. You live in a van by the river, wretched and alone. Now it says, do you want to play again? We already know playing again with yes works. Let's try in for no. Look at that. See you later, alligator. And then Python, of course, is saying, do you want to quit this program? Which we, you know, doesn't really matter if we do or not, because that's the end of the tutorial.